insurance scheme guarantees you a lump sum of £20,000 at the age of 55. I'll be out of that before I get out of this queue. <laughs> you want to be if you bore me to death? That's right, £20,000. Just think what that could mean to your children and grandchildren. How am I supposed to have kids if I'm stuck here by down a post or something? <laughs> what do you reckon, girls? Anybody got an envelope? <laughs> there are only two certain things in life. Birth, and death. Yeah, so nip down to your local post office, you can well experience both. <laughs> All that precious airtime going to waste. Why don't they show something useful like the Open University? You could come in to buy a stamp with one CSE, by the time it got to the county, you'd have a degree in mechanical engineering. Yes. Ah. <clears throat> good morning. I've lost track of which one it is, but good morning anyway. <laughs> People waiting. Is that right? Well, you better tell your computer to hurry up and work out the vast amount of interest there is on my account. Otherwise, my posse here will turn this place into West Beirut. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> the money in large denominations, please. Where'd you get the handcuffs? Same toy box as the savings book. That's none of your business. And I came here to make a serious withdrawal. I don't get spoken to like this on my regular bank. Surprised you get any words out of a pig with a slot in its back. <laughs> time Master Delbert Wilkins made a deposit was two shillings and ninepence in 1967. Yeah, that magic day when I went down the park and collected up all them empty dandelion and burdock bottles and took them back to the shop. My first business deal. Where were you in the summer of love? In here, hating every minute of it. <laughs> so taking that and the initial five pounds into account... Yeah, my mum gave me that to give me my start in life. So now I'm going to pay her back, now that I've made it into the tax exile bracket. I make that £8.45 in new money. <laughs> what about the 20 years interest? That's included. Open your briefcase. £8.45? How am I going to pay my phone bill? Try buying some telephone stamps for a start. <sighs> no, just give me the cash. Pound coin denominations large enough for you. <laughs> <laughs> Next. How much do you value your life? I mean, really value it. Oi, fish face, cut the Star Trek philosophy and tell me how I can get older than 20 grand. You know, there are only two certain things oh. in life. Birth and death. An accountant, you say? Well, how come a nice girl like you, interested in a wastrel like Delbert? Well, I guess I'm just a sucker for lost causes, Mrs. Wilkins. Oh, call me Rose, dear. Well, I don't know about you, Claudette, but all this finding out about each other makes me thirsty. How about another pot of tea, Delbert? Oh, yeah, and some more cakes, too, please. <laughs> Good stop. Why is I ashamed to be seen somewhere smart? No, I'm not. I'm just breaking in these new boxer shoes. 
I don't want to subject him to any sudden stress, you know what I mean? Ah, oh, what's a Delbert? Uh, <laughs> do you recognise you in daylight? What are you doing in here, then? I'm just checking out a few eateries, Kev, you know what I mean? To review on my radio show. So if these cakes aren't totally dread, it's curtains for your shop, right? <laughs> oh, right. They normally panic when I say that, Kev. And then they say something like, have anything you like on the menu, Delbert, and uh, forget the bill. <laughs> oh, I'd like to, mate, but I've only just got this job. And I don't really want to lose it. I can't all lead your lifestyle, Delbert. That's right. <laughs> so, no dosh, no nosh, right? Uh, right. Anyway, got to go, mate. Nice to see you doing well for yourself, Delbert. Uh... <laughs> Take care. <laughs> You're a Samaritan. <laughs> Mum, I've decided you've had enough. If you drink any more tea, the caffeine will excite your heart. You'll start dancing on the table, hip hopping, body rocking, doing the do. You'll we'll have to cut you out in a skip full of sweat. You've always got to try and make a clever remark. It's only his way of saying it might spoil his treat, Rose. Oh, call me Mom, dear. <laughs> Don't you worry about my heart. It survived the last 27 years disappointment bringing him up. Well, well, you're going about this the wrong way, you know what I mean? I mean, you don't wheel somebody into an operating theatre and say, this surgeon is great, he hasn't lost a patient yet. Oh, by the way, it's his first day on the job. <laughs> say something nice. Oh, well, he loves his mother and is kind to animals. You've just described Al Capone. <laughs> Except he had money. Anyway, he's got other qualities. He's courteous, spondicious even. That's a pretty high compliment. <laughs> and above all, he respects my independence. Does that mean you're going to get the bill today? No, it does not. You invited us up. Only because I knew that if we'd gone round to your gaff, you'd have whipped out the photo album by now. Oh, just as well I brought it along. <laughs> He was such a good boy then, Claudette. This is him, the first day in his nursery class. Those sunglasses go well with his uniform. <laughs> and this is him the day I opened his post office savings account for him. And it's still there for a rainy day. Yeah, except he wouldn't even buy an umbrella now. <laughs> <laughs> the sound of music. Listen to that, Alex, a symphony of cash. Sounds more like a funeral march to me. <laughs> Only joking, Zippo. Oh, I know you are. But this is going to be a profitable and harmonious relationship. I doubt if there's any need for funerals, Alex. <laughs> Six o'clock, Alex. So you'll be letting the punters in, so I'm going to play on my machines. Jim, fix it. <laughs> Thanks very much. Well, look, you've got to get to know him, because he'll be calling around to collect the take-ins three times a week. Oh. Sorry, Alex, interrupting a meeting at the Brixton Round Table, am I? Discussing a charity dinner for the underprivileged, eh? This is Julie. She likes a bit of fun. Do you like those in here? Don't plan Oh, God, Alex. People come here for fine wine and good conversation. They don't get either, but it's better than that junk. I'm sure they'll grow on a Zippo. Well, they'd better. Otherwise, they'll be growing out of you. <laughs> Good Funny old Julie. One of these days your smart mouth's gonna land me in trouble, and today's the day. You do realise they are two of the nastiest villains south of the river. The Clyde, that is. <laughs> Show a bit of respect, will you? I didn't think they were social workers. I saved my respect for somebody higher up the evolutionary scale. Please. Please. They're not north of the river yet. <laughs> I don't see why decent, hard-working citizens should kowtow to criminal grillers, especially ones called Zippo. Let me give you a reason. He sets fire to places, usually with people still in them. <laughs> Hence the name, Zippo. <laughs> Mr. Zippo advised me to install these, for which I pay him an extortionate rental and 100% of the takings, which have got to be 500 quid a week per machine. <laughs> Right, let's just establish optimum lighting conditions. This is first date level, patch dim. This is second date level, still see what's going on. <laughs> Third, the thing's warming up nicely. <laughs> and this is a home run, you can't see a thing, but you don't care. <laughs> Can we go back to perfect strangers and get serious, please? You got it. 
That's better. I want to see everything. This sounds perfect! Really real! And this is the part when I say, take a seat, Claude. <laughs> Relax while I slip into something more... <laughs> comfortable. <laughs> Then I all met the mood, right, by putting on a crucial tune. Wait, darling, wait, 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 wait. Right. <laughs> Which part of my everything would you like to see first? Well, how about your books? Uh, yeah, all right. I've got Green Lantern versus Swamp Thing, uh, but I can't let you have the Miracle Man because I've only read it twice. No, I'm not going to have books, though, but I want to see your accounts. Oh, come on, Claudette. You've got to switch off some time. Forget work, let's just hang. Well, it's a bit difficult when I find myself sitting on this. <laughs> Come on, Del, but why don't you admit it? You're like this piggy bank, broke. I'm not. I'm not. I just don't carry cash, that's all. I'm like Prince Charles. In fact, when he did his tour of the inner cities, it was me who told him. I said, Oi, Charlie, ditch the coin guy. It causes unsightly bulges in one's trousers. <laughs> it's even more embarrassing when one's wearing one's killed at Balmoral. <laughs> This is like talking to a recorded message. Delba, I want to see your checkbook or your bank statements. You got the fine line in sweet talk, you know, Claudia. <laughs> anyway, I haven't got a bank account. I'm never up when they're open. <laughs> you can't be a self-employed big-time media star without a proper set of books. That's like a snail without a shell. Are you calling me a slug? <laughs> I mean you're gonna get squashed underfoot. Look, you must have receipts or something. Ah, oh, them. Chill. <laughs> I must wear that suit one day. It's wicked, you know what I mean? <laughs> there you go, darling. Now be careful with it. I'm going to leave it to the nation. <laughs> Don't bother lending me Miracle Man. I've got all the science fiction I need in here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, suddenly my accounts are in the black. <laughs> I didn't see any recent receipts for electricity bills, actually. Yeah, well, I'm supposed to get it free, aren't I? Because of all the consumers I attract via my radio show. Only the deal hasn't been rubber stamped yet. <laughs> yeah, well, until it is, perhaps I ought to give you some professional help. Yeah, yeah, all right, Claudette. But uh, unless your calculator's fitted with a set of headlamps, I reckon it's now time for us <laughs> to get down to some serious snogging. <laughs> <what you're> <laughs> Oh, please, Claudette, don't go. I, I didn't mean to say that. And I do need your help, honest, because I haven't got any money coming in at all, man. I can't even afford to pay Winston his wages. Then you won't need me to drive you down the radio station tonight. Winston, that wasn't meant for your ears. I heard it anyway. Oi, if you're strapped for dosh, why don't you sell some of your suits? Yeah, and if I cut off my legs, I could flog all my shoes. <laughs> practical remedies, Winston. How about getting a job? Who said that? <laughs> Yeah, money's too tight to mention, but I'm gonna have to mention it, guy, you know what I mean? See, I've got this friend of mine, right? No names, because it only gets seriously embarrassed. We're talking high profile. In fact, we're talking a block of flats. <laughs> That's another story. Actually, it's another 42 stories. <laughs> anyway, this friend of mine, right, has just discovered that he's got no money at all. And every day he gets swamped with junk mail, inviting him to spend even more money that he hasn't got on loans and credit cards. There's a whole river of this stuff pouring through his letterbox, along his hallway, up his staircase, just like the Castro GTX ad. <laughs> and he doesn't know what to do. And this made me think. If it causes so much hassle for everybody, why have money anyway? Why not have a barter system? That way, if you're a builder and you want some meat, all you've got to do is find a butcher with a dodgy roof. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't got any special skills, go and hang out with people who have. They'll give you stuff because you make them look good. So watch out, you high street banks. Your days are numbered. The Delbert Wilkins Show. Flash it! <laughs> Is that how you see me? Someone who makes you look good? Of course not, Winston. I still want you around, even when I'm not giving you things. It's a true test of my sincerity. Ah, oh, cheers, Delbert. Oh, and if you need a loan, I've just had a really big win on one of Alex's new fruit machines. Oh, thanks, Winston. It's cool, man. That's really crucial. Cheers. So how much do I owe you for your services for tonight's programme? That should about cover it. <laughs> so that makes us quits, right? Right. <laughs> the 
Gilbert? How's your life? Not my own, Uncle Jake. I can't get a moment's peace, you know what I mean? The phone's always ringing up there. It's the price of success, I suppose. Is that right? I thought maybe you had to shave out here, because your juice had been cut off. No, no, no. It's just that the socket in the bathroom is the only spare one I've got, so I'm using it to power my fax machine, you know what I mean? Sending <laughs> documents all over the world. <laughs> of course, it does have its disadvantages. This morning, I accidentally transmitted my soap on a rope to Japan. <laughs> So the two cats in overalls this morning weren't from the electricity? No, they must have been from the phone company. The electricity was cut off last night. I thought it had gone quiet in your flat. So quiet you could hear a pin drop. <laughs> Happens to me all the time. The noise was deafening. Yeah, well, so's the sound of Red Bill stumping onto my doormat. They must be fatally attracted to the word welcome. Red Bills? <laughs> I ignore them. They hurt my eyes. <laughs> What's up, man? I sense the collar red in the vicinity. Oh, that's just my answer phone, Uncle Jake. I must be the only geezer in Brixton to have one fitted in his car. <laughs> Delbert, I tried the flap and the phone's been disconnected. However, I've arranged for your electricity to be reconnected. Now, can you do me a favour? Go and look for a job, will you? Claudette, I'm not unemployed, you know what I mean? And don't argue. <laughs> It's a machine that answers back. Don't just sit there. Start the engine up, Delbert. Message ends. <laughs> Sorry. One espresso and that's a hint. Oh, we're not in any hurry, dear. Jim's got some adding up to do. Oh, I'd lend him some chalk and let him use our blackboard, but we need it in about eight hours for tonight's menu. we are wasting the waitress, do you know that? I shall have to ask Alex to put you on as part of the entertainment. How do you feel about being sawn in half? Fine. Then I could dislike you twice as much. <laughs> oh, dear. That looks disappointing, doesn't it? There appears to be what we in the financial circles call a shortfall. Is that why your boss has made himself scarce? No, he's gone to the market. That's where people hand over a reasonable amount of money and get something for it. Instead of an exorbitant amount for nout. Right, it takes all sorts, doesn't it? <laughs> I suppose we'll have to leave him a message then. Fix it, Jim. Well, that comes out of my wages, you moron. Then you'll better start working overtime, dear, because this is a very long message. <laughs> Morning, please. Everything all right? It's only 11.42 a.m. Happens. It's dinner time. <laughs> Who's this, the speaking cop? No, he's a friend of mine. And these are friends of Alex's who are just leaving now that they've made their traditional Greek greeting. <laughs> Tell Alex we're sorry we missed him. But if he can't make up the cash deficit, he's going to have to come up with a really big favour. Otherwise, I'll burn the place down. Traditionally, of course. <laughs> If I was on duty, that might have sounded like threatening behaviour. <laughs> but I'm not. Nice of you to introduce me as your friend, Julie. Oh, believe it or not, I was quite pleased to see you. Here, do you want a drink? I'm gonna have one. Oh, first things first, we better do this properly. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what's going into a job centre got to do with the Delbert Wilkins Guide to Cruciality? Well, the answer is simple, Guy. It's an initiative test. What you have to try and do is get the job you want as opposed to the one they want you to have. <laughs> See, places like this should be called the Fob Centre, where they try and fob you off with really fulfilling jobs like dredging canals or road testing nutcrackers. <laughs> but I mean, what's that got to do with jobs, man? What about if you want to be foreign minister or something? Or, in my case, a major television personality? They'll also try and tell you that you haven't got the proper qualifications. But how many old levels has rolled in that guy? You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, they've got some great stuff in here. They've got a restart program that gives you good training. They've also got a job release scheme which kicks out the older people to make way for you. Nice. <laughs> so instead of having to watch Clive James's body trying to escape from any available hole in his suit, you'll be able to watch me, Delbert Wilkins, man and mohair in perfect harmony. <laughs> in the meantime, I'm going to go in here and check out this thing called the Job Club, see if they need a DJ. <laughs> Oh, 
never mind about feeding your faces. Feed the machines. There's a free glass of wine for every winner. Come on, it's in a good cause. All the proceeds go towards fire prevention. <laughs> for a couple of two-armed bandits. You should have got them arrested when you had the chance. Look, it's sort of hard for me to call the police when all I normally do is call them names. And, of course, you had your boyfriend Sebastian's good looks to protect. He isn't my boyfriend. He's just got a crush on me. Don't use images of violence, Julie. <laughs> just now. Come on, keep those cherries dancing. Yo, Alex, forget the funky fruit, man. I've got some bad news for you. Someone's got a contract out on me, right? <laughs> man, it's worse than that. I can't do the show tonight. Oh, is that all? What do you mean, is that all? This is the biggest disaster to hit broadcasting since Radio 1 started. <laughs> Hang on. What have you heard? Why can't you do the show? Because I'm doing a show somewhere else, Alex. More of a personal appearance, actually. But it's only for one night till I get my shifts changed. Of course, there were several firms vying for my services. These guys paid half the rates of the others, but they have the wickedest uniforms. Which particular section of the solar system are you guarding, Delbert? I'm starting at the top, Julie. Protecting our national heritage. It's a video warehouse in Camberwell. <laughs> Whereabouts in Camberwell, Dee? What do you want to know for? I'd like to meet my new replacement. He's adequate, he's temporary, and above all, he's cheap. What more can I say? <laughs> Thanks for all the hype, Delbert. I'll take a bottle of champagne into the studio, please, Julie. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, my public awaits. <laughs> <laughs> Limo sold me, Alex. Stage purpose of visit, please. Testing nerve of new security staff. Well, Ard, you could serve afternoon tea off that. What's more, I could pay for it now as well. <laughs> so, paid work does have its advantages then? Yeah, man. I've only been here two minutes. Not one of them video machines has been nicked. <laughs> well, I don't have to be here much longer. I've managed to wade through that litter bin you call your accounts. And I reckon I can get you a tax rebate. All right, let's get out of here and spend money. Hang on a minute, Del, but it helps if you're a taxpayer first. You have to throw a six to get into the game. Yeah, the dice are loaded against people like us, aren't they? That's why we end up with the fluffy ones. <laughs> oh, come on, babe, that's not true. I was a checkout girl at Tesco till I went to night school. If I can achieve, so can you. Starting over there. You know... You look like one of your superheroes in that uniform. Which one? Well, now, let's see. Who's the most handsome? What about this green guy? You mean Green Lantern? <laughs> nah, swamp thing. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Claudette. Ah, <laughs> oh, maybe this will help cheer you up. I've got to go. Winston's due on the air any second. OK, I'll catch him at home. Don't you dare boost his ratings. <laughs> Bye. Fear not, my people. The King of Cool has returned to reclaim his throne. <laughs> this is treason! I've been standing in the shadows for all this time, but now I'm taking the mic, and that is rightfully mine. I've got a stack of coke that is truly crucial, so that a really good time is what you should. have been deafening for me, but now I'm back to put the soul in the BBC. That's the Brixton Broadcasting Corporation. You take it from me, it's a hip operation. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to offend any sufferers out there. I'm the one who's suffering, Winston. Now wrap up. Hip operation, flippy neck. <laughs>
daydreaming, were we, son? We thought you might need a bit of daylight. Who are you? How'd you get in here? We left the door open, Delbert, <laughs> as promised. I'm sorry, guy. Do I know you? Because strangers don't normally wink at me, unless they're single, attractive women with rudeness in mind. <laughs> Look, what you need to know is that we're friends of Alex, and that he owes us some money, and through there is his way of paying up. With your cooperation, of course. <laughs> there seems to be a slight conflict of interest here, you see. I'm owed money as well, but only if I protect all that equipment out there. Oh, very proper, son. Very proper. Don't misunderstand me. I don't expect you to do it for nothing. Just give us the keys, and I'll ask Jim nicely if he'll leave your head on. How's that? <laughs> Look, guys, this is so unsporting. I mean, my first night on the job, and you turn up to commit a crime. And what's it all for, eh? Money. That's all you want. But let me tell you how much cooler it is to earn it honestly. I mean, I know, because I was just like you once, earning my living from various skanks and ragamuffin business. But that was before I pulled into this job centre on the road to Damascus. I mean, there I was, this checkout girl from Tesco. And now look at me. Boys, if I can achieve, so can you! This guy has given me a migraine. Fix it, Jim. Ah, 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 ah. Not my face, not my face, and not in my mouth because it's my living, and not my hands because I have to scratch on the decks, and not my legs. Much as I'd like you to bury your fist in his mouth, Jim, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to nick you and use it both. What's the charge? Well, smashing my friend's plates for a start. She told us you might be thinking of broadening your range tonight. Prove it. We just dropped by, I wish I'd make good luck in his new career. Didn't we, Delbert? Much as I dislike giving you any job satisfaction at all, Sergeant Lily, book him down or murder one. <laughs> <laughs> this hurts. Dukin's a have a go hero. Of course, I could have managed without your help, Sergeant Lily. I just needed to keep him talking for another seven hours. <laughs> If I ever have kids, I'm going to put their names down for the front of the post office queue. <laughs> if you ever have kids... <laughs> what are you doing? I'm just looking for those pigs flying past. <laughs> no, let me see that reward money. Make sure you haven't spent it. All right. <clears throat> what do you want? You closed that account. Yeah, well, it's like Parliament, isn't it? It's having a state reopening, but the Queen is still outside queuing in the rain, so you'll have to make do with my mum. <laughs> She'll give you this or have you robbed a bottle bank? <laughs> Do oh, you mind? My son is a hero. He saved an entire warehouse from armed robbery. And if anyone is going to criticize him, it's going to be me. <laughs> you know, they offered him a secure job in security. You know what I know? And dash it back in their faces. <laughs> no, ambition. Exactly my sentiments too, Mom, darling. Mum, I didn't come here for stereo aggravation. <laughs> Persuade that video company to give me a better job, more in keeping with my talents, you know, with genuine prospects. Check it out. And remember, this life insurance scheme guarantees you a lump sum. Add away of zero charisma. <laughs> That's enough of Mogadon Man. Life's too short for pension plans. So jack your body and rock to the beat. And when you pay your money in, get a receipt. Get a receipt. Get a receipt. Get a receipt. When the capital C, even the big bad wolf wouldn't mess with me. I'm original, my style is unique, and I'm rocking this mic eight days a week. I'm a secret quest to free you from doom. My baby gonna sit like up this room. Don't be so sad, cause I have to go. Just press me one and watch the video. I wanna get into it, man. I'm a heavyweight. The front page, just like a tiger, should be in a cage. I'm wanted for my impeccable taste. Seven changes of clothes, just in case.